Hi, this is a tutorial to get you up and running with the InfoSemantics Rotator Component widget. So this is another one in a series of widgets uh, called Component Widgets that InfoSemantics has built. And the idea behind them is that you create a simple interaction and then you tie that interaction into a Captivate variable. So if you edit the Captivate variable, the interaction updates to reflect the Captivate variable's current value. So if you've used any of the other InfoSemantics component widgets, for example, the slider component widget, you will find much of this widget familiar. So what does the rotator component widget do? Well, as its namesake suggests, it rotates things. The slider components moved things back and forth or up and down. This widget rotates them. So it's really quite simple to use. Uh, on stage here, I've got two graphics that are acting as knobs, and I've just called them knob one and knob two. And I just want to set up the rotator widget to allow me to move these knobs around with my mouse uh, for however long I like to. So I'm going to double click into this first rotator widget, and this will bring up the settings. And I'm just going to look under the required settings uh, for this lesson. and all you really have to do to get the widget working is type in the name of the object that it needs to rotate. And in this case, that's just going to be knob one. And just putting in that information, I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to test the movie up here uh, by uh, going to the play button and, and selecting projects, or I could press F4, which is my habit of doing so and not telling you. And here in the output movie, I've got my knob here. Now I can't move this one because I haven't set up that widget yet. But if I go over here and start spinning this knob here, you can see that is working very nice. The, the rotator widget automatically works out where the mouse is in relation to the um, object that it's rotating. And so it's always going to keep it that object pointing to the mouse cursor. So that works pretty nice. I can just keep spinning it around and around. Okay, what about this object over here? Well, we're going to run into a little issue with this, but let's just set it up as we did with the last one first. I'm going to call, um, open up that widget's properties, type in knob2 as the name for this widget. So this widget deals with knob1 image, this widget deals with the knob2 image. Okay, press F4 to test the project. And now when I go to rotate this knob, you'll see it's not keeping in line with my mouse. The pointer of this knob is always about 90 degrees away from my mouse cursor. So how can we fix this? Well, let's just close out of this preview and go into the rotated components properties. And you'll see right next to the rotating object section, we have the initial angle section. Now this allows you to set what angle the object that the widget is supposed to be rotating is as it is drawn on stage. So if I just move my uh, widget properties over here, we can see that this knob here is pointing about 90 degrees to the right. So I'm just going to grab this initial angle knob and move it so that it is also 90 degrees to the right. And then I'll click OK, press F4 to test the movie again. Then in the output, now when I rotate the knob, it is keeping in sync with my mouse cursor. So when you're dealing with the rotator widget, always remember that this little field here, which says initial angle, is not talking about what angle the knob will be facing uh, when it first starts in runtime. That is dealt with by the bound variable, which we'll look at in another lesson. What this is talking about is what angle is the rotating object pointing already as it is drawn on the stage. So make sure when you're using this widget that those two knobs are always pointing in the same angle. Okay, let's move on to another example of what you can do with the rotator widget. Of course, uh, knobs is a very handy thing to do with it, but also another thing that is often part of interfaces is a, a dial. Uh, for example, here we have a speedometer graphic from a car. So this graphic is basically made out of three portions. I've got the image background here. Then on top of that, I've got this arrow. 
and on top of that a little center wheel to hide the um, hard edge of that arrow there. What I want to do is to be able to drag that arrow back and forth and to be able to change its angle. So this arrow already has an instance name of dial one. So I'm going to go to my rotator widget and I'm going to put in that name dial one. Now moving over to the initial angle section, we can see that, well, as drawn on stage, those two knobs are pretty much pointing the same way. So that should not be a problem. So I'll click OK, but we are going to run into a little problem here. I'm going to go up here and test from this slide or press the F8 key for short. And now when I go and drag the knob to turn it, you'll see, okay, it is rotating around the center, which was great for the knobs that we had on that first slide here, but not so great for this interaction. Ideally, we want this uh, dial to rotate around its root here, the bottom hard edge, which is being hidden by that uh, little graphic there. So what I'm going to do is go back into the rotator component widget and under the required settings here, the third section there, right after initial angle, is the registration point. This is the point around which the widget is going to rotate the graphic. So currently it is rotating around the center. What I really want it to do is rotate around its uh, bottom center. And by selecting any one of these points, I could get it to rotate around any point, but in this case, I want it to rotate around the bottom center. So I'll click OK. Press F8 again to uh, test from this slide. And then when we shift the dial around, we can see that it's not rotating around the center. It is now rotating around its root, which is giving us a very believable interaction. Okay, so currently when I spin this, uh, what do we call this, a dial, it's going infinitely in all directions. Whereas that's not really how a speedometer works. You sort of get over here and it's not gonna go any further. So how would we set this up with the rotator widget? Well, let's go back into the rotator widget settings and under the optional settings, right over here on the right is a min and a max angle. This allows us to uh, set limitations for how far the rotating object is going to spin. I'm gonna set this up to be negative 45 to positive 45. So this knob is only going to rotate in between negative 45 degrees to positive 45 degrees. I'll click OK to that and press F8. And now when I go and rotate the knob, you'll see it's not going past its minimum angle. And if I rotate it all around to the other side, it's not going past its maximum angle anymore. So using that, you can create some great user-defined interactions. But in the next lesson, we'll also see how you can use the variable binding in order to link the rotator widget to other widgets.